Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. In today's video, we are talking about how we can approach selling our photography prints and discuss an uncomfortable truth that can't be ignored. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Over the last few years, I have been lucky enough to spend time and work with some of the very best landscape photographers in the UK. One of the things I learned early on, which I found a bit disconcerting, but at the same time reassuring, was that none of them sell that many prints, and certainly nowhere near enough to make up a large percentage of their income. Now, I find this reassuring because I don't sell that many prints either. In fact, over the last couple of years, I'll be lucky if I've sold one per month. Now, there are a number of reasons for this. Firstly, I've done no marketing whatsoever, and that's ex exceptionally important. But one of the main issues is scarcity. Scarcity is what makes up the value of any asset. Say if 10 of us are stranded on top of a mountain when the weather suddenly changes, but only one of us has a coat, that coat suddenly becomes extremely valuable and everybody would want it. The uncomfortable truth is that following the dawn of digital cameras, photography became accessible to almost everyone. As the years went by, loads of us started taking really good pictures and suddenly there were hundreds of beautiful images of well-known landscape locations that essentially flooded the market almost overnight destroying the scarcity that older photographers, older film photographers, used to enjoy. The supply now far outweighs the demand, which reduces the value, and I doubt that will ever change again. Over the last year, I've spent a lot of time researching NFTs, and if you follow me on Twitter, I've actually got, I've pinned a thread to the top of my profile, which shares my thoughts. But essentially, I believe they're in a bubble, and a lot of people are going to lose money and get hurt. The reason they've become so popular though is because they've created this narrative of scarcity where essentially the blockchain technology confirms the artwork as a one of one, but it's not a one of one. It's a false narrative because the JPEG can be recreated infinitely with a simple screenshot and the image itself does not even reside on the blockchain. I don't wanna get bogged down with NFT talk, but what has been interesting is the community that has built up around it and the organic marketing that creates. It's led to artwork being bought all over the world. And even if we subtract the so-called investors, it still shows there is a demand for great artwork and great photography. I have no doubt that digital assets will become commonplace, but for me, Really, nothing can replace the enjoyment you get from looking at a physical, tangible piece of artwork. So maybe we can use some of the lessons learned from the digital asset, asset boom and apply it to our own strategy when trying to sell our physical prints. Now, normally in these types of print videos, the photographer just suddenly produces a beautiful looking print. But part of what gives artwork its value is the endeavor, the time and the struggle the artist has gone through to create the work. So we're going to head out and about now and capture an image with the intention of making a print. And then we'll come back and discuss a new approach that we can take to selling our prints. So you join me out and about on what is an absolutely stunning morning, but it is it is one of those mornings when everything around you looks absolutely incredible. You're inspired by the landscape, but for some reason or other, actually making an image out of it seems to be really difficult because the thing I'm struggling with at the moment is actually finding a subject that inspires me. The landscape as a whole with these kind of 360 degree views that I've got are fantastic, but trying to find a composition and pull that down into something more interesting is really hard. And that's what I'm struggling with right now. Really struggling. Although I have set up a composition, probably the most obvious thing that I've found is this frozen pond or small lake. The clouds are absolutely stunning. They are high 
They weren't there at sunrise, but since the sun has come up a little bit more, these really high altitude clouds have come over and they just look fantastic. They've still got some lovely orange and yellow colours in there. So that is kind of making this image work, I think, a bit better than it would otherwise. I've then got, because of how cold it is, these reeds that have just frozen so beautifully and it's made them got that really interesting white colour. I've then got this group of kind of uh, pine evergreen trees over to the right hand side and then some sort of interesting trees frozen over the other side as well and that kind of is about as basic as it gets. At the moment I'm not particularly feeling like it's going to be anywhere near a portfolio image but it's early in the morning and <laughs> I'm having to work hard to keep the positivity going because I'm still tired and a bit uh, bleary-eyed. So uh, when I get home and I'm feeling more positive after getting this fresh air, getting this exercise, getting the feeling of well-being up that doing landscape photography gives you, I may feel a little bit more positive about the image and I may later on be happy with it, which is why I've kind of essentially forced myself in to taking it. What I do like though as well is the reflections on the pond. Because I want those reflections, there's not gonna be any use of any filters or polarizer or anything like that. It's so beautifully still as well that all these trees and grasses in the, in the foreground are just allowing me to use the exact exposure time that I need if I have the camera at ISO 100, which I do. So I'm playing around with the composition a little bit. Left and right, I'm happy with. I'm happy with kind of this tree here I'm happy to cut that out on the left hand side and then using the trees kind of as a <clears throat> kind of a guide into the more into the center of the image and then just playing with the tilt up and down to include a little bit more of the reeds because I really like them they're interesting although then to include a little bit more of the sky as well so uh, maybe it'll be a vertical image I don't know but let's have let's have a play I'm focusing on the reeds just kind of on the edge of the pond there. I'm bracketing as well, f11, 125th of a second as the middle exposure. Oh, and the light. Can you see just here as the sun starts to come up, just where my hand is there, the light starting to come up through those trees and that is now reflecting in the image with a golden light. So that looks really good and there's some lovely colour in the sky, lovely yellows and oranges that I can still see. Yeah, and I think that's probably going to be... <laughs> Probably going to be a decent image, but we'll see. I'm not hugely excited about it at the moment, but I shouldn't play it down, should I? Decide for yourself. <laughs> so, a lesson I learned time and time again is that how you feel about an image in the field is often very different to how you feel about it after the fact, back at home. I've had times when I think I've captured something great in the field, but then when I see it on the big screen, I'm absolutely disgusted with myself. Happily today though, it's the other way around because I now love this image and it's printed beautifully with very minimal editing. But before we discuss our sales strategies, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And Squarespace is the best place for photographers to build their websites, mainly because it's just so easy and you don't need very much technical knowledge. Simply use one of their templates, put some of your own images on there and you will quickly have a unique and beautiful looking website. We're talking about selling prints today and Squarespace is also perfect for that because you can upgrade your site to an online store. And like some other platforms, Squarespace do not take a fee when you sell something. They also have 24 seven customer support. So hit the link down below or head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and then use the off code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. So what do we need to think about when we're selling our prints? So firstly, we need to consider the market. Who are our potential customers? Traditionally, I think with landscape photography, it has not been other landscape photographers who buy our work. It's normal people that want a pretty picture on their wall. So how do we make people value our work? The most basic way is to, I think, produce work that shows a place that means something to them. 
This is why shooting locally can be so effective. Seascapes, I think, also do well because truthfully, a beautiful rocky shoreline in Australia might not look that different from, say, one in North Yorkshire. Another way is producing work that stirs up an emotion, an exciting or positive feeling, because when the artwork goes up on their wall, they want to feel good about it every time they look at it. Now, with this in mind, non-photographers will almost always prefer warm, bright, and saturated images, opposed to photographs that are moody, muted, or with cooler tones. To be honest though, I think it's going to be increasingly difficult finding this audience for our work until as photographers, we start properly supporting each other, which up to now truthfully has not happened. Because if we don't support each other and value the work of others, how can we possibly expect anybody else to? Take music, for example. Musicians support and appreciate the work of other musicians all the time. They listen to each other's songs, they go to their gigs. It's an entirely collaborative economy. I think photography has to do the same. And we can inherit that community aspect from the NFT space into the physical space. So follow me on Twitter, share your images, and I'm pledging to buy the work of another photographer once every month or so to start building out my collection into something very significant. But what about price, I hear you ask? This is definitely one of the most difficult aspects and I have always been very aware that I do not want to undervalue myself in any way. I know people will pay £40 for my book, but I don't think other photographers are paying upwards of £300 for a print. So to start selling more of my own prints and make them more accessible to everyone, I'm going to try something new and hopefully innovative. I'm gonna call this new project Continuum, and it launches today. One way that scarcity has always been created in photography is to essentially sell a print as a limited series where you promise there will only, I don't know, be say 50 copies of the print made, and once they're all sold, you can't make or sell any more. Thus the value increases over time if the demand for the image exists. But I want to take this a step further, create more scarcity, where the image will be limited to just one of five or one of ten. But not only will it be limited by space, I'm also going to limit it by time, hence continuum. So every week when I put a video out where I make an image, that image will then be released uh, alongside the video, but will only be available for seven days. Seven, seven, seven days. Then to make it accessible for everyone, I'm going to price it in a way to provide maximum appeal to other photographers who watch these videos, you, and then reward those who are quick and first in the queue. So we're starting with this image today. So if you click down below and go to my website, there are six available. Now, one of five will cost 35 pounds, where pretty much I'm only going to break even. Two of five will then be 55 pounds. Three of five then goes up to 99 and so on and so on. There is a sixth available, which I'm calling the artist edition, which is my copy, literally this one. And I've priced that in a way to basically discourage you from buying it. But if you do, the presentation will be incredible and I won't own a copy of my own image. One of three will be shipped rolled in a tube and you get a digital certificate of authenticity. Four and five will be flat packed with a physical certificate and the artist edition comes with an acrylic bound certificate and also optional framing. All editions will be A2 in size, printed to the very highest of standards and I will also sign them all. There are more details on the website, so get in there quick, and this will be happening every week when a video goes out for the foreseeable future. So my most loyal and dedicated followers will have the best opportunity to, I don't know, essentially collect my work at a very attractive price. Because after seven days, the initial period, the seven day initial period, the unsold, uh, copies will revert to their normal price that non-photographers would have to pay. This might not work, it might not, but I think it's a model that could, and hopefully you can try it too. I'd actually love to create a platform that gives others the opportunity like this to sell their work and generate that kind of buzz for 
buying physical photography, much like has happened with digital in the NFT space. <laughs> but that's it for now. Check out the website and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you on another one very, very soon. <laughs> Bye.